Hey, everybody. Welcome to Fantasy Whiplash, presented by our good friends at State Farm right here at OpenSports.com. I'm your host, Sid Rosenberg. Today, we'll go scouring the waiver wire with Paul Bordet of Roto Experts, whose weekly pickup artist can also be found at Yahoo Sports. Good afternoon, Paul. How are you, pal? I'm doing good, Sid. I'm doing good. Good, good. Nice to have you here on the program today. And let's get right to it. Baseball, very exciting right now. Let's start with the Tigers here, former Marlin Dontrell Willis has now put together two solid starts here, Paul. Three earned runs and eight hits in his last 13 innings of work after an atrocious couple of years in Detroit. The Tigers claim he was suffering from social anxiety disorder, which, by the way, Zach Greinke also suffers from. Greinke getting the win last night now at 8-1. and one. Would you hop aboard the D train in Detroit right now? Well, you know, I think I'm in the minority, but I am hopping on the D train. Um, you know, I chalk up his struggles over the last few years to, to pitching coaches who sort of tried to tinker with his mechanics so much when there was really nothing wrong with him in the first place. I mean, sure, he's not like the cookie-cutter type pitcher, uh, but, I mean, the guy's always had stuff. He's still young. He's won a former Cy Young, and he's looking good now. And, you know, as he builds up arm strength, you know, his last start uh, was his longest start since, like, September of 2007. As he builds up arm strength, he'll be able to go deeper into games and, uh, you know, sustain success, I believe. All right, so you like Don Chow in Detroit. Now, another guy you have your eye on here is just back from a rehab stint in the minors, Paul, talking about Rich Hill of the Baltimore Orioles. Spent the last four years in Chicago with the Cubs, won 18 games over that four-year span. Now in Baltimore, has not made it out of the sixth inning in each of his two starts, but you like him. Tell us why that's the case, Paul. Well, I've always liked Rich Hill. I mean, how can you not like a big 6'5 lefty who throws like a, you know, a knee-buckling curve like that? There's no question this guy's got the stuff. It's always been about control. It's always been about his head. Um, and, you know, even though he hasn't made it out of six inning, he's looked really good in his first couple of starts. Uh, walks are probably always going to be an issue with him, but he's striking guys out. And uh, as long as he can keep the ball in the park and, uh, you know, Again, he'll be able to go deeper into games as he gets more acclimated to the, you know, the big league competition again. Uh, I really like Rich Hill. I mean, he's strictly upside here. You saw what he did a few years ago. You know, he won uh, you know, a bunch of games. He struck out 183 guys, sub-4 ERA. Uh, I'm looking for him to do big things this year. All right, Paul Bordet here joining us on Fantasy Whiplash. Paul, catcher is always a tough spot in fantasy baseball unless you get yourself a guy like Joe Maurer with the Minnesota Twins. But you've got a possible stopgap guy for us in Arizona, and there's also a newcomer in the outfield in Para there. How about catcher and Para in Arizona? Can both of those guys make an impact? Well, I mean, Chris, uh, Chris Snyder in um, Arizona is, is a good pickup in leagues where you start two catchers or in uh, NL-only leagues uh, because, I mean, this guy's got power. He's averaged something like 15 home runs, close to 60 RBIs the past couple of years. I mean, the batting average is always going to be an issue. He probably won't hit a, a cent over 250, but um, this is a guy who can hit 15 to 20 homers. I think a lot of people were concerned initially that there was going to be like a strict platoon with him and Miguel Montero, but Montero's been stinking up the joint over the last month, and Chris Snyder's been raking on uh, four homers. In his last five games, um, I, I'd pick him up, ride the wave. And what about Parra in the outfield? Your thoughts on him? Uh, Parra, uh, I mean, if you ask anybody around the organization, everybody thinks this guy's bad as Major League Ready. Um, he hasn't played a game above Double A, but um, he's got skills. He can put the ball in play. He's got a little speed, and you know his glove work in center field is um, is heralded uh, amongst uh, Major League scouts. So I, I think um, he's going to have a chance to play every day out there. Uh, Chris Young is earning his keep, and. Uh, you know, Connor Jackson, no, no one knows what's going on with him in the Valley Fever or whatever illness he came down with. So and there's also a talk Connor might move back to first base. So um, there could be an everyday job out there for uh, Para, and he's making the most of it. Uh, he's hitting well right now, and uh, once he starts running a little bit, he'll be even more of a fantasy asset. Now, Paul, as you know, I spent most of my life in New York City, but I'm down in Miami right now. So I got to know this guy pretty well the last couple of years. That's Mike Jacobs. I was still working at FAN in New York. When he came up as a rookie, had that monster series in Colorado as a Met. Then, of course, he comes down here to Florida in the Carlos Delgado deal. It's a bunch of home runs for the Marlins the last couple of years. In fact, last year, 32 home runs and 93 knocked in as a Marlin. This year in Kansas City, quietly Mike Jacobs, nine homers, 25 runs batted in. Do you think that Mike Jacobs gets the respect in fantasy leagues he deserves, or is he a guy you might want to stay away from? No, I don't think he gets the respect that he deserves. I mean, this is a guy that is now locked into that DH role in Kansas City. He's playing every day. He's even playing against lefties, which he doesn't hit that well. But he can still hit for power against them. Uh, I mean, this is a legitimate candidate to hit 35 home runs and knock in 100 RBIs. For the first base position, I I'm not sure why people aren't picking up. Perhaps last year's uh, 240-something average is scaring them off. But, I mean, if you look deeper in the numbers, he had an extremely unlucky uh, average on balls in play last year, which resulted in the low batting average. But I, I think he's legit. 
legitimate candidate to finish around 255, 265, um, hit 35 and drive in 100. And when you're talking about a, a corner infielder, um, you know, the position's not that deep, and he, he's definitely worth taking a shot on, especially as uh, the weather gets warmer and uh, the balls start flying out in Kansas City a little bit more. Yeah, one of the other problems down here was over the last couple of years for Mike Jacobs was did not get the opportunity pull to face lefties. When Joe Girardi managed the Marlins, he took him out of that spot. Freddie Gonzalez did the same thing. So maybe Mike Jacobs gets more at-bats this year in Kansas City. Now, Paul, you're one of the few guys I've seen that actually recommends picking up a middle reliever for fantasy baseball. Your latest pickup artist column, you say Carlos Villanueva in Milwaukee might be a guy to have on your staff. Tell us more about Carlos. Well, uh, I'm specifically speaking to those in leagues where um, there's, a, there's a differentiation between starting pitching and relief pitching. Um, this guy qualifies at SP and RP and Yahoo leagues. And, um, you know, if you're in a league where starting pitching is scarce um, and you're looking for someone to sort of fill a couple of spots and give you good ratios, um, Carlos Villanueva is one of those guys. You don't have to waste a relief pitching spot on him. You put him in at starter and let him play every day. I mean, he was pretty lights out last year out of the bullpen. I think he posted something like a 2.6 ERA, uh, a whip under 1.1, you know, 65 Ks in 64 innings. And, you know, over the last month, he's, he's really, really pitched well. So I, I think if you're looking for help in the ratios and, and there's no starting pitching out there, uh, I think he's a smarter pickup than picking up, you know, someone like, uh, I don't know, uh, LeVon Hernandez. Oh, I was just going to go there. You just mentioned LeVon <laughs> Hernandez, and as a diehard Met fan, I watched LeVon Hernandez pitch a complete game against the Nationals last night. Last night, checked Paul, 4-1 and one with an ERA in the low fours and did throw 127 pitches last night, so he still got that arm. And, you know, based upon yeah, the fact he throws up. 85 miles per hour, he can still go the distance. Why don't you like LeVon Hernandez down the stretch? Well, uh, I mean, let's be realistic. Um, I, I don't think he's going to keep this up. He does eat innings, which is good for the Mets, keep that bullpen fresh. Uh, but, uh, I mean, just look at what he's done over the last five or six years. And, you know, I, I think uh, it, it's not uh, realistic to expect him to keep this up. But he's pitching well right now. I am a Mets fan as well. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping he keeps it up. But, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't roster him. <laughs> All right, that's fair. Now, before we go, I need a candidate for the, next week. Next week, next week's OpenSports.com Fantasy Sleeper of the Week, Paul Bordet. Who is the Fantasy Sleeper of the Week? Well, it was a toss-up between two guys here, but uh, I'm going to go with a guy who may not be as much of a sleeper because of uh, how he shut down the Yanks the other day, but I'm going yep. with J.A. Happ from the Phillies. Uh, rookie pitcher, he's going to be facing San Diego next week in San Diego, which everybody knows is a park uh, that isn't known for a lot of runs being scored. The San Diego offense isn't really, although as of late they've been playing better, they're, they're not really that threatening. Uh, you know, he kept the ball down against the Yankees, six innings, four hits in Yankee Stadium. So uh, I think making the trip over San Diego, I think he's a great start next week, and I'd pick him up, uh, you know, if you have room in, in your uh, pitching staff to pick a guy up, he's the guy. All right, there it is. You can catch all Paul Bordet's work on Roto Experts and Yahoo Sports and follow the Pickup Artist on Twitter at twitter.com slash the P-U-A. Pickup Artist, very good. Paul, thank you so much for stopping by today. We'll talk again next time here on Fantasy Whiplash. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sid. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of Fantasy Whiplash, brought to you by our good friends at State Farm right here on opensports.com. Make sure you come back on Friday as we go down on the farm for a minor league report. Until then, I'm Sid Rosenberg. We'll see you next time. The future of sports on the web is open.